let's move on and talk about uh, our notebooks and how to convert them into our documents. In general, our notebooks are great. But there's a couple of reasons you may not want to use an R notebook. I really like R notebooks in class because it always uh, they always include your code and your output. Uh, and so they're really nice for interactive coding and sharing your code with others. But you may not always want to show your code or make your code available for download. Alternatively, you may want to choose which code to show versus which code to hide. For example, if your intent is to prepare a report to share with a client um, or with someone you know, who's an administrator, they may not want to even see your code because they may not know R, but you can still use R to prepare a report to share with them. And in that case, R Markdown documents may be a better option than R Notebooks. And when you are ready to convert your R Notebook into an our Markdown document, all you need to do is change the output from HTML underscore notebook to HTML underscore document in the header of the uh, R notebook. So you might be wondering how our Markdown documents and R notebooks are different. They sound like they have a lot of similarities, and so what makes them similar and different? First, let's talk about what makes them similar. They both end with files that have an extension of .rmd. And so our notebooks, in some sense, uh, were an evolution of what started off as being our markdown documents. And they look the same while you're editing them. So when you're you know, working with an R notebook or an R Markdown document on in R Studio, you may not immediately be able to tell which of the two you're working with because they have kind of function very similarly. So how, how are R Markdown documents and R notebooks different? R notebooks are meant to be used interactively while you're coding, whereas R Markdown documents are meant to be knit into reports. So when you're you know, coding interactively and you want your output to show up uh, and you want to share your code and your output, that's what R notebooks are for. And so most of you know, the work that I do is in R notebooks. But when you want to knit your R Markdown document into a, a, a report where you control which code shows up, which code uh, doesn't show up, that's what makes them different is that R Markdown documents give you a lot more flexibility to show and hide things. Another difference is that when you're working in an R notebook, your output automatically gets saved to an .nb.html file. Whereas on the other hand, R Markdown documents only get converted into .html files when you press a, uh, the knit button, which knits them into HTML files. So nothing happens automatically with R Markdown documents. And as I alluded to earlier, our Markdown documents give you more control over your output. And you can go back and forth between our notebooks and our Markdown documents simply by changing um, the output field in the header. And technically, you can actually have a document that's simultaneously an R Markdown document and an R notebook. But for the purposes of the class, we won't do that. We'll typically replace an R notebook with an R Markdown document. Before you convert your code from an HTML notebook or R notebook into an R Markdown document, there's a couple things that you have to check. The first thing you have to check is to make sure your code is reproducible. What I mean by that is that when you were working with an R notebook, the output.nb.html file was being generated automatically every time you save it. Um, or every time you press the preview button in RStudio. And so if you had code that was not reproducible, let's say there's a data set that you uh, didn't load in, or let's say that there was something that you didn't uh, library in, uh, you know, in your actual 
our notebook itself. Your code might still work as long as that package had been libraried in elsewhere, whether it's in a different document or whether you typed it into your console to a library in that package. When you go to knit an HTML document, it actually expects your code to work from the first chunk all the way to the last chunk in order. So if there's any steps that get skipped, like you created a variable somewhere else outside of your notebook, you libraried in a package or loaded in a data set outside of your notebook, when you convert that notebook into an HTML document, when you go to knit it, it won't work. So there's an easy way to check whether your R notebook is reproducible. You can restart R uh, or R Studio and rerun all your code chunks. Uh, and if you do that and everything works, you know that your code is reproducible. So one option is that you could physically restart R Studio um, and rerun all your code chunks one by one. That makes sure that any packages that need to be uh, libraried in um, have been libraried in. But there's also a button in R Studio um, on the top right when you have an R notebook open that says Run. If you click the little arrow next to Run, go down and click the but uh, the option that says Restart R and Run All Chunks. That should let you know if your code is reproducible. If your entire notebook runs without any problems, that means that you're all good and everything is reproducible. However, if you get an error um, that says, you know, a certain package wasn't loaded or says that um, there's a certain object or data frame it can't find, that tells you that you either forgot to library in a package or you forgot to load in a data set um, in somewhere in your R notebook. So, as I mentioned earlier, whereas in an R notebook, your .nb.html file is being constantly regenerated and updated when you either uh, run a chunk of code or you save it or you press the preview button. In an R Markdown document, you have to press the knit button to generate the .html file. And when you actually convert an R notebook into an R Markdown document, You'll notice that this little button uh, next to the find, uh, right above the you know, editor, previously it read preview. And the moment you change it from an HTML notebook to an HTML document in the output, in the header, that button will change from preview to knit. So when you see a knit button here, you know that everything um, is now looked at as an R Markdown document. So only do this once you make sure your code is reproducible. So let's dissect what actually goes into an R Markdown document. And like I said, this is going to look very similar to an R notebook. So the first part is obviously the header. And at the very bare minimum, converting an R notebook to an R Markdown document involves changing that output field uh, of HTML underscore notebook into HTML underscore document. This section is uh, the header. And that was the only thing I've changed thus far. And the code I'll be showing you in class today is my lab five code uh, from the lab code that I had prepared. You can also specify other options in the header. So this is the simplest thing that you can do but there's also some other options that you can specify. If you're going to specify other options, it's important that there's a couple of things that you have to do. So first, you have to move HTML document to the next line and then press tab so that it's tabbed one tab past the output uh, field. Next, you have to add a colon after HTML document. Notice that on that last slide, there was no colon. But if you want to add options to the R Markdown document that are global options, you need to add the colon. Uh, 
And then any options that modify that R Markdown document have to be tabbed once further And in this case, what this option is saying is to add a table of contents to the R Markdown document. So the only difference between this code and what we had with our HTML notebook or our R notebook is that we've added a table of contents um, and we've converted it into an R Markdown document. By default, any of the headings that you've specified with a hashtag uh, or a pound sign in the markdown portion of the text will be added to the table of contents. And I think the default is actually if any header starts with either a hashtag, two hashtags, or three hashtags, they'll get added to the uh, table of contents. Notice that if you put a hashtag in the code, that gets considered a comment. And so those won't show up in the table of contents, but any other hashtags that are there will, that are as long as they're in the markdown portion of the text. So in this case, remember how I often start my code with a setup chunk, which loads in my packages and my data sets, and I often put, you know, hashtag space setup. So in this case, the first uh, item in my table of contents would be the setup. There's also other options that you can specify. Um, and one of the other options here is TOC underscore float, uh, which you can set to true. And that adds a really nice floating table of contents um, such that when you scroll down in your document, not only does it tell you uh, where you are by highlighting the relevant aspect of the table of contents to tell you where you are in that document, but you can also click it uh, in order to browse different parts of your document. You might be wondering, why is TOC underscore float not tabbed one further than TOC? If TOC float was modifying TOC, you would have to tab it one further. But in our Markdown documents, if you read the documentation, TOC float actually modifies the R Markdown document directly so you actually have to specify both TOC colon true and TOC underscore float colon true in order for your uh, for the floating table of contents to appear. You might be wondering, most of the times R doesn't care about tabs. Why does it care about tabs in the header? The main reason is that this header is a pretty standard header that's used in different types of documents. And it actually follows a specific language that's referred to as YAML, Y-A-M-L. YAML stands for yet another markup language. And it's, you know, one of many different markup languages. An another example being Markdown, which is what we use when we, um, you know, uh, want to add headings to the text and so on. So you don't need to know anything about YAML, but that's just answering the question of why do you need to introduce tabs here? It's because that those tabs are part of the YAML format that the header belongs to. So if you forgot how to add a table of contents uh, and you, you know, didn't want to do this by hand, another option is that you could actually click on this settings button here uh, next to the knit button go down to output options because notice how html document is under output so any all of those things are output options and then you would see here that the output format is an html which means html document and then uh, the include table of contents here is checked and by default it wouldn't be checked and so if you wanted to add a table of contents you could go to this through the r studio menu click on include table of contents and it would automatically edit the header for you to have the table of contents show up. So, so far we've talked about changing the header options, which affects the entire R Markdown document. You can also change individual 
code chunk options. And we'll talk about three options um, that you might want to play with and adjust uh, in order to make your code more consumable to someone who doesn't know R. So let's say we had this code here where we're trying to figure out the uh, mean systolic blood pressure for individuals with and without diabetes using our NAMSYS 08 uh, data set. By default, if we type this in, um, which is the way we had done it in uh, lab uh, and on homework, you would see both the code and the output of the code in the resulting HTML file. So this by default shows the R code and the output in the knitted HTML file if you were to leave this code in your R markdown document. However, let's say you don't want your code to show up. You still want your output to show up, but let's say you want to hide your code. You can use the same code in your uh, code chunk. The only option that you need to change is next to that R, just press space and type in echo equals false. And that will tell our markdown when you're trying to knit the document that you don't want the code to show up for that code chunk, only the output. So setting echo to false will show the R output, but not the code. So as I mentioned earlier, there are a variety of code chunk options that you can set, but I'm only gonna really focus on three in this class. And for the most part, you'll only need to use two of them. So one of the common options that um, I'll ask you to use is echo equals false. Echo equals false shows the output of your code, but not the code in the HTML file. And this is really useful for generating a report that you're going to share with someone who doesn't know R, whether it's a client or an administrator. This is something that you know will show uh, the nice output you got without showing people uh, the code, which they may not know how to interpret. Then there's actually eval equals false. Eval equals false shows the code, but not the output. So it's a little bit of the reverse of the echo equals false option. And since the name is eval equals false, as the name suggests, your code doesn't even actually run. So it doesn't even get evaluated. Uh, when you include eval equals false in a code chunk. This is really useful for showing code for teaching purposes. So let's say you wanted to tell someone in a R Markdown document, here is the code that I used, and you didn't want that code to actually run, you could add the option eval equals false. The last option which you'll use uh, in the very first chunk of your R Markdown documents is include equals false. And what this code chunk option does is it runs the code, but doesn't include either the code or the output in the HTML file. And this is primarily useful when you want to load in packages and data sets, because in case any of those packages have output associated with them, uh, you don't want any of that extraneous output to end up in your R Markdown document because again, someone looking at it who doesn't know R uh, might not know what to make of it. So typically in the very first chunk of my R Markdown document, which is usually my setup chunk, I'll include this piece of code of include equals false, which says, I want you to load all those packages and load all those libraries, um, but I don't want you to actually include any extraneous output generated by doing that in the actual final document. So again, if you forget the uh, chunk options and you want plain English explanations that will get linked back to these three options, you can click on the settings icon in the chunk. So notice that unlike the last time I showed you the settings icon, this settings icon is actually showing up next to that play button um, in, inside the actual chunk. And then you can click show nothing but run the code in the output uh, select menu, and that will translate into include equals false. And you can change this 
you know, these settings for every individual code chunk. And for the purposes of this class, I'll ask you to, you know, edit each one of those uh, code chunks to uh, not show your code, but to, for your code to run, except for the first chunk where I want you to uh, not show your code and not show your output. So show nothing but run your code. So the first chunk will be include equals false, and all the remaining chunks will be echo equals false. Another thing I want you to notice here is that um, I made a variable called name of file equals namsys 08rdata data. And then I set week number or week num to equal five. And if you go to the markdown text below it, this is just plain text that I typed in. Uh, that's that reads, you know, what I wanted it to read was download the namsys 08rdata data file um, under the week five uh, folder on Canvas. And I could, you know, type that in and hard code that information there. Let's say though that I wanted to reuse my uh, this code for, you know, a, a different. Uh, class or a, a different data set, or maybe next year I wasn't sure which week I was going to teach this. So rather than edit the actual file um, and type in, you know, the new name of the file and the new uh, week number, I could just make variables that contain that information. And then if I want those variables, um, or the information from those variables to show up in my markdown document, I can use a single backtick r space name of file and then uh, end it with another backtick. And when you actually go to knit this, it'll actually look as if you had uh, typed in namsys 08rdata data. And so this is called an inline um, inline code because it's actually running outside of a code chunk. It's running inside of the markdown portion of your text. That's something I won't be expecting you to do um, for homework or for anything. It's just letting you know that if you had, uh, let's say, a, you know, a scientific paper or a write-up where you were referring to a number of findings like means and medians inside of the actual text of your paper, this is one way to make even your paper reproducible because instead of typing out the actual mean, you could just type a line of code um, with a single backtick with an R in the beginning that would kind of populate the mean into that place in your write-up. Um, and if the mean were to change because your analysis changed, your manuscript or your paper would kind of update automatically. So I'll just leave that there for you to consider playing with. It's not something that I'll expect you to do. The main thing to pay attention here is that you can change uh, your uh, code chunk options using this menu in RStudio. So next, I'll ask you to take a break and try to convert the Lab 5 uh, document into a Markdown document. What I'll do is I'll post my original Lab 5 document to Canvas feel free to use that, or take your own Lab 5 R notebook and try to convert convert it into an R Markdown document and see where you run into issues. See if your code is reproducible in the way that it needs to be, um, you know, and try to set some of those settings that we talked about earlier in, in this lecture. So to refresh all the different steps involved, after you make sure that your code is reproducible, you'll change the header in the output to HTML document from HTML notebook. You'll specify header options, and I'd encourage you to add a table of contents and make it floating if you can, because it's uh, really convenient to work with. Specify the code chunk options that we talked about. So make sure for the first chunk, you add include equals false, and for all the remaining chunks, add echo equals false. And try out inline R code. This is not something that's required, but this is a nice way to embed information from R into the text portion 
of your R Markdown uh, report that you're generating. And so within the Markdown text, not in a code chunk, try writing out 1 plus 1 equals, and then write you know R space 1 plus 1 surrounded by backticks. And then make, make sure to knit this. So remember that unlike our notebooks, when you save this or when you run your code, nothing automatically happens. You'll see a knit button on top. Um, and so when you press that knit button, make sure that you're able to knit this. And the R Markdown uh, HTML file that gets generated will again be in the same folder as your R Markdown document. So you should be able to open up that folder and find this file if everything worked.